dealing with their immigration status after they graduate. Some are worried that they will be deported. We're talking about illegal uh, students here in the United States going to our U.S. colleges. On the phone with Marie Gonzalez. She is an undocumented student who will graduate from Westminster College in December. She is fighting for legislation to allow people like her to continue their education and apply in this country illegally. How did you get here and how did you get into school? All right. Um, my family and I are originally from Costa Rica. Um, we came to the United States when I was five years old and uh, we came in legally. We had tourist visas. Um, we liked the states. We wanted to stay, so we started the process um, to become residents and eventually citizens. Um, we moved to Missouri. Uh, we loved it there. My parents owned a restaurant, and we thought the whole time that we were in the processing. We talked to attorneys. Unfortunately, we missed the deadline, and in 2002, uh, we're placed under deportation proceedings. My parents were deported July the 5th of 2005, and I was granted what's called a deferral on my deportation, which pushes my deportation back. Um, and that has happened three times now. And with this deferral, I'm able to go to school, to drive, to work. Um, and so I'm a very lucky person in that I will be graduating this December, which is something I thought I was never going to get a chance to do. Ina Rohrbacher and the director of federal policy at the National Immigration Law Center, Josh Bernstein. Uh, Congressman, let me start off with you because uh, you've been a, a, a critic on uh, or someone who's been a... a, a real advocate of, of making sure that our, our borders are more secure. What's your beef with this whole issue that uh, some of these young people who were raised in the United States, perhaps they came here illegally, but, you know, she seems like she's a good kid going to school, wants to graduate, wants to get a job and be live here in the United States. What's your beef with that? She, she's certainly a wonderful kid. There's no doubt about that. And there are wonderful children all over the world. We cannot afford to have tens of millions of people Sw swarming into our country uh, and expect that our country is going to stay the same and that uh, it's not going to hurt our own people. In this case, we have so many young people swarming in and uh, flooding into our country illegally. And this young lady, her parents came. She is an illegal immigrant. You, when you overstay your visa, you know you're going, you're breaking the law. Yeah, you that's... know exactly what you're doing. We're spending in California alone $2.2 billion. educating young people who shouldn't be here while our own kids are getting shortchanged. Okay, Congressman, they, let the, me pause the you there because I want to bring okay. in Josh Bernstein. Uh, okay. Josh, thanks for joining us. What is your take on this? Because it is true that some, some schools actually give in-state tuition rates to these, uh, these young students who are illegals. Therefore, American students who played by the rules won't get access to this cheaper tuition. What is your take on all this? Well, it's, it's to our benefit for these kids, kids like Marie, to be able to get, um, to be able to, you know, we have a choice. Are we going to educate them or are we going to spend Homeland Security dollars, you know, chasing after honor students? But at and what cost? Be at the cost they, of taxpayers and also at the cost of other students who wouldn't get those slots? No, actually, it's a benefit to taxpayers because... We've already invested in them when they were in elementary school and high school. They've grown up here. Now we're going to have a chance for the, to reap the benefits. Now that they're, you know, they're going to go to school, they're going to be able to make their contributions in taxes, etc. If, if they're here legally, or else if we keep them in the shadows, it'll be harder for them to do that. And, and you know, why would we want to educate them and invest in them that way and then, and then ship them off so another country can get the benefit of, you know, and... and Why should Marie, her, her, the people she grows up with, grew up with, her, her pastor... Let's, let's bring her, the congressman you know, back in. Congressman, what do you think about that? It sounds like she's, well, you know, just trying she, to be a good she, kid. Well, just like all the rest of the illegal immigrants, 99% of them are wonderful people. But if we give Marie her education, as I say, if we spend... By the way, it's not just in-state tuition. For every dollar of tuition a kid pays in this state, the state taxpayers are paying five times that amount.
So we're spending $2.2 billion to educate young people like Maria. But Josh and says it might save us, save us money, oh, actually, because oh, we're yeah, paying no. for their, your, their junior does, high does, and their high school. Does, it, does anyone believe, include Josh, believe that if we keep paying and giving benefits like this to these young people like Marie, who are wonderful people, that we won't have hundreds of millions? Where do we draw the line? Eventually, <laughs> we have to draw the line. It's, it's bankrupting California right now. Right now, our kids are getting... Uh, a short changed on their education because we're paying for other kids who shouldn't be here. Okay.